Uh, all right, it's 5 p.m. Let's get started. First of all, uh, can you all hear me? Okay, good. All right, and you can see my screen as well. All right, so the goal for today is to introduce assignment one. And I'll start by opening the assignment on Canvas. Uh, okay. So this is assignment one, painting. Um, so the this assignment is going to look like a simple painting application, and the idea being a conventional um, paint application like Paintbrush on Microsoft Windows, for instance, where you have a black canvas. You guys can see the image here on on the assignment. So you have a black canvas and you can click and drag your mouse around to draw shapes on the screen. Uh, in this assignment, you will draw different types of shapes like squares, triangles, circles. You should be able to clear the canvas with a button as well. And there's gonna be some configurations uh, for your shapes. For example, you can change the color of the shapes and uh, you'll specify the colors using these sliders here. So one slider is for the red component, the other one for the green component, and the other one from the, for the blue component. You can also control the size of the shape that you're gonna draw using a, another slider. And for circles, we will see that in computer graphics, when you draw a circle, we are actually drawing approximating a circle using triangles. So because of that, <clears throat> this parameter here controls the amount of segments you're gonna use to draw this approximate circle using triangles. So this, this specific slider here only applies for the circle. Um, all, the, what, all the other ones apply for all the other shapes, for every single shape, including the circles. For example, shape size should change the radius of the circle or the sides of the square. Or for triangle also, you could change both the base, both the base and the height of the triangle, controlling just one single parameter. Um, okay, that being said, so this list here defines all these features that I just mentioned, okay? And this assignment has something different, which is, now, up to, if you implement everything up to here, oh, it's very actually kind of a bit laggy, but if you implement everything up to here, this is enough for, I think, a B plus grade, if I'm not wrong, or yeah, B grade, probably a B plus grade, but to get an A, you're gonna have to kind of improve this assignment a little bit. And this component is going to be kind of a creative component of the assignment where, where you, as a programmer, you're going to define some extra feature to add to your, to your paintbrush program uh, or turn this program into a little game or something. So the idea is to use everything you created um, to do something extra. And this extra component, it's uh, on your own. You're going to define it. And... And we have a couple of examples here. So because of this um, structure, we won't provide any detail on how to do this extra part, but for every single specific part of the, of the mandatory parts, we're gonna, we're gonna, we have specific details here. Um, any questions so far? You can type the questions in the chat. I'll, I'll try to, to take them as we go, but if we get too many questions, then uh, we might need to take like breaks or something. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so similarly, uh, so similar to the other assignment, assignment zero, we have same structure here, right? Several bullet points highlighted in, in bold. And then, so each of these, of these bullet points map to rubric points, which you can see down there um, here. So the, the, the structure is the same. I won't go, so, and, and it's important to note that uh, Professor James wrote these specific instructions here. I did for assignment zero. So, and when he did this, he also made a bunch of videos for you all. So I see something. Do you mind turning off the sound of PPL joining? Oh, people joining in notifications. Uh, let me see if I can easily do that. I don't know. Um, oh, wait, what is this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do that, honestly. If someone knows, just let me know. Like, post something on, on the in the chat. Yeah, it's annoying, but later people are gonna stop stop coming in. So, uh, another question is if homework one homework one expand homework zero in a way, uh, a little bit. I'll talk about it. I'll, I'll talk about it later when we start actually coding. I'm gonna go kind of kickstart you all in this assignment, so I can comment on that later. So, but okay, so let's keep going here. We have a, all these bullet points and the difference is that now we have specific videos on YouTube for, for some of these parts, right? So James himself made these videos and you can access the videos using this YouTube here, link here. So then you just follow, if you see an instruction like this, watch videos for one one, you should go here uh, on the YouTube link. Let me open this. Let's see if this is going to open. I might have different accounts. Um, yeah, and here you have a playlist with videos. And when he says there 1.1, watch videos for 1.1, you should watch 1.1a, b, c, d, and so on. Okay, so these four in this case. Uh, feel free to, I mean, they are not mandatory videos, but they are very useful videos. So it's just an extra resource for you all to, to understand what we expect you to do, you know? Uh, again, I want to emphasize that all of these instructions here, they are uh, merely instructions in the sense that you, as a programmer, you can uh, change whatever it's not specified, or if you think there's a better design, for some sort of like function or something, feel free to go ahead and do it. We, we don't have an auto grader in this class. So it, you don't have to, if you decide to like just move or change stuff a little bit here and there, it's all right. So I, we got a lot of questions like that on Piazza, uh, people asking if they could change something or the signature of the functions and all of that. So these things can be changed. Um, the specifications we provide here, they are guidelines that are important because a lot of you have never implemented graphics applications before and all these applications they, they have uh, already some patterns that we use to implement them so we are trying to kind of guide you through those patterns so you can get a more clean and optimal way of implementing these things so okay um so for this assignment i won't go like specifically for all, all these bullet points because they are very long but essentially, there is a key component uh, that we have to learn here. And this one, I'm going to do it with you. Uh, I'm going to scroll up here and show you the, the example. So when you finish your assignment, it should look like this. OK, so the, at the end, you should expect to have something like that. Um, and essentially here, every single shape that you see on the screen is made out of triangles, even the circle and the cube and the and the square so a square is actually made out of two triangles and the triangle of, obviously is this primitive that we're going to use to draw every single thing in this course so it's very important to learn how to draw 
a single triangle on the screen using WebGL. And I want to do that with you uh, today. Uh, okay, so before we get started, any questions? Okay, okay, that's good. I'm going to start with, so I got this question in the chat asking if the homework one expand on hom homework zero in any way. Uh, yes, in the sense that we're going to have a similar um, project stru structure, but there is a key difference here is that in lab zero, we use what is called the 2D context of canvas to, to draw on, on the canvas. We're going to start using now WebGL. And because of that, the, the, we are changing the rendering engine underneath canvas. We are still using a canvas element, but the tools to, to render images now are different. Now we are going to use WebGL instead of a 2D um, engine. And what is the main difference? Well, the main difference is that a 2D engine it's, uh, first of all, is limited to 2D primitives. And also, it, is, it uses the CPU to draw. And WebGL has full 3D capabilities and also uses the GPU. So we can do much, much, much more with WebGL because we send all the processing or most of the processing to the GPU. And we can achieve just higher end graphics, OK? And from now on in this course, we're going to only use WebGL. But it's important to know you have different rendering engines underlying, underneath, underneath um, Canvas. So OK, what I want to do is I want to create a new folder here called Lab1. OK? And you can think, you can think of this as your, when you start solving your assignment or creating your own solution, you could call this Assignment1 or something. Um, and inside this, I want to copy from lab zero, I want to copy, um, not lab zero, from my assignment zero. So let me go back here. Let me see. Um, I want to copy from my assignment zero. I have my assignments, I have my assignments here. I'm going to copy this file, which is my HTML from assignment zero. It's a good start. Uh, so labs, lab one, this. I also want to copy the library, the, the vector library. I'm not sure we're going to use it in this assignment. We might. But it's useful from now on to always copy your, your HTML and your libraries, OK? You, you won't hurt if we if you copy the libraries. So I'm going to open this project on my text editor. Let's see. There you go. And I'll just show you the HTML page. If I try to open this on my browser, So let me make sure it opens there. OK. So we don't see a canvas here. Apparently, there is. there might be a, an issue here because we didn't copy the, yeah. We didn't copy the JavaScript. So it's complaining here that uh, main is not defined. And yes, it's not defined because we don't have a JavaScript file yet. I don't want to copy the JavaScript file. I just want to make a new one. I'm going to make a new, I'm going to call, call this assignment1.js. And I'm going to call this also assignment1 HTML. Uh, I'll change the title here to be assignment1. 
and we keep the canvas on the screen. That's fine. I'm going to erase these buttons here for now. We don't need this interface. We're going to need the sliders later and, uh, and buttons. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear this. Actually, I'm going to just keep. I'm going to keep one button here. Just we might you might want to reuse this later. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to keep this button here. Uh, and I want to erase this thing here. And also this and this. OK. I want to erase all of this. Let me refresh my page. Oh, yeah, assignment one. Call this assignment one now. Still doesn't find my main function. That's because I have to write a main function. OK, so I'm, I renamed my script to assignment one here. And so this script is right here. And I want to define a main function here. Uh, OK, I want to create a main function here. So that is called from here. OK, that's my main function. And we still load the library. Let's keep this there, OK? Load external libraries. Um, this is, OK, I'm going to keep this here. There you go. Now we should get rid of the problem. Good. We don't see, now I just cleaned up. So again, this is related to what what uh, someone asked in the chat. So it's related to homework. This this is related to homework zero because the structure is going to have, it's going to be very similar. You're going to have an HTML, a JavaScript, and a directory of libraries. OK. In this assignment, we're going to need extra libraries. And they come from the book. So I am going to bring it up, Leia Matsuda here, the web page from the book. And here, if we look at chapter two, we are, uh, so not chapter two, let me look at chapter three, because I think there is a very, yeah. So here they start drawing. I do recommend you reading everything before this, but in this slab, we're going to mainly cover this idea here, hello triangles. So we're going to do something similar to this. OK? Um, I won't start from this example, because if you look at James' videos on YouTube, it actually, he, what he does, he, he starts from this example, and then he kind of starts solving the assignment from this example. So because he already has that view of, of our, our, this, that type of explanation, which is more like uh, um, top down, I want to provide a bottom up approach where we do this thing here from scratch. And then you decide which one is more useful for you. OK? So but I, what I want from here at this point is, oh, sorry, I'm going to open this. I want to grab the libraries. So I'm going to inspect this project. And here, you can see the files. So I can, I can, um, wait, uh, sources here. Yeah, I can copy these three files here. I'm going to need these three, these three JavaScript files here. And the easiest way is to kind of copy and paste them inside lib. So I'm going to call here uh, kuon. I'm going to create a file kuon utils.javascript. And I'm going to copy this guy. OK, next one.
webgl debug.js. Third one. Uh, WebGL Utils .js. Okay. Okay, there you go. So these libraries, we don't need to understand them. They are very complicated. We don't need to understand them, but we can just assume uh, that they have features that we're going to see throughout the book. So the book, whenever needed, will explain certain functions from the library. And because they, they wrote the library themselves, so then they're going to explain every function you need at certain point. We don't need to go and like understand beforehand. So what I need to do is then kind of load all these libraries in my project. I'm going to load them here. First one is Quan Utils. This the other one is WebGL debug. And the other the last one is WebGL WebGL Utils. Okay. So this this libraries we're gonna always copy from one assignment to the other so from from now on always make sure to have this all these four libraries in your in your projects okay uh, all right let's let's load our project and see what happens seems to be working nothing really broke didn't get any errors so before we we move on. Any questions? Okay. Can you still all hear me? Just double checking. Okay. Because sometimes, of course. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's move on. So now it's actually the, where the action starts, okay? We have the basics here. Now we're gonna start doing stuff in our main function. And the first thing I wanna do is I want to grab uh, the canvas, the canvas element from the JavaScript, okay? Similarly to what we did, we did this in, in assignment zero. So normally the first thing we would do is make a canvas element here. And you're going to do, you have to access that canvas, right? You have to do uh, document dot get element by ID. And they, we have to give the ID of the canvas. So in this case is the ID's example. I'm going to change this to WebGL, okay? I'm going to change this to WebGL. It's more meaningful. It doesn't have to be a WebGL, okay? I'm just picking it because it's a better name. So I see a question in the chat. Do we need to use the CSC160 library that we implemented something in assignment zero, right? Um, yeah, so you need, make sure to include the library that you, that you created in assignment zero. Again, I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to need that necessarily, but it's always useful to have that library. So whenever you need a vector, you can just use that. Okay. So make sure to have it here. Again, if you don't, if you ended up not using it, it's okay. Okay. So we have the canvas and as usual, what I do is I normally print stuff. So I see, I see if it's working. Okay. So for example, if I do this, and I print it now. Okay, I get the canvas here. It's working, right? It's even highlight for me there. It's just a white canvas. That's why we don't see any difference, but it's there. Um, question, 
are semicolons required in JavaScript? Uh, no, they are not required. Over time, they, uh, the standards being actually more to kind of not use semicolons nowadays. There is some cases where semicolons are mandatory and, and if you don't add them, you might get uh, a behavior that we're not expecting. So it turns out most of the time it works if you don't, if you don't add semicolon, but, uh, but there are some issues that can happen. So I do recommend using them, even though the community is slowly changing to not have them. But at this point, we are in a transition, like a kind of a transition moment. Um, okay, so let me move I have a canvas. So what I want to do now is uh, you'll see that the book always does this kind of thing here. Uh, not for this, but I want to grab the GL context from, from the canvas. So before you would do something like this, right? Get, I think, context 2D. So you did something like this in the previous assignment. Right now you're gonna use, you're gonna grab the, you're gonna retrieve, I wanna type here, retrieve WebGL uh, rendering context, okay? So now we, we're not gonna use this. We're gonna use a, a function that comes from the library, which is get web WebGL context, okay? So this function here is not a native JavaScript function. It's a function from, from the library. Okay, it just makes things a little bit easier. Uh, it's not a very long function, but you have to give the canvas here. And if you give the canvas, then you get the you get the GL object. This GL GL object, it's a very very large object that has all the functionalities from WebGL in it. It's a massive object. So I'm going to print this. Uh, WebGL get WebGL context. No, oh, it's web, not web. Web GL context. There you go. Okay, so we got, if you expand this, you'll see it has like tons of properties and tons of functions in here. Okay. So, so this is your kind of GL context. This allows you to start drawing use WebGL. Our goal in this course is to learn as much as possible all the features from this that are implemented in this object. Okay. So, okay, so this is the main difference from assignment, from assignment zero. Okay. Something that is useful, you'll see the book does a lot. It's just like checking if, if, if the object got retrieved correctly. So you say like, for example, if, if this notation says that if this is null or if not GL means that that object is probably new, null or undefined. So there was an error. So you can say, okay, failed, failed to load or to, to get, for example, WebGL, WebGL context, something like this, right? And then you might return minus one here and the kind of get out of the program. So this might happen if your uh, if your browser, for example, doesn't support WebGL, which might not be the case for all of you. And if you are using a browser that that doesn't support WebGL, you're gonna have to move to a different one. Uh, but all the modern browsers already support it, so don't worry. But maybe a specific browser from a phone or something might not open this. Okay, this is just for uh, handling these cases. Uh, okay, so let's try something here. Let's try, try our first GL command. And all the GL commands are gonna be, <clears throat> they're gonna be, or have the same format, which is GL dot something. And you see here, I have actually already an autocomplete system in my, in my text editor. Uh, you might want to install this in your own I had to install this as a plugin, but I get like all the possible functions here. So the first command we're gonna learn is the clear color. And here we're gonna give, we're gonna give um, 
the color in RGB. So here is what you're doing is I'm setting the clear color to be black, okay? And black is zero, 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 okay? The last number here is the alpha channel, all right? Uh, someone is asking in the chat, what is the plugin name? I can give you later, okay? I don't wanna leave my, I wanna finish this first and I can give you all later this, this, this details. But what this does is it sets the clear color to be black, but not necessarily paints it or kind of changes the background color. It just sets it to be, to be black. This means that whenever, so I just refreshed my page and nothing really changed. But what this does, it, it, it tells the WebGL context, okay, next time, next time you clear your screen, clear with the black color, okay? To actually perform a clear, so let's say, actually clear screen, we have to do gl.clear. And you have to pass here some arguments or one argument specifically, which is, it's a flag. In this case is a flag GL color buffer bit, okay? So WebGL has many buffers inside it. And one of them is the frame buffer, which is, you can think of it as a 2D matrix that has pixel colors in it. So with the clear command, you can clear different types of buffers. And we want to clear the color buffer one, which is the one that stores the, the colors of our canvas. So, or the frame buffer, actually. So if I do this now, now I see a black canvas because now I'm clearing the screen, which means I'm setting all the pixels to be zero, okay? Any questions about this? Okay, so just for the sake of like trying out, let's try out making this red, for example. Red here, it would be one, zero, zero. So this, again, this is red, green, and blue channel. And these values go from zero to one. So one means maximum intensity, zero means minimum intensity of that shade, uh, of that color. So for example, this is full bright red, okay? And this, for example, if you wanna do green, you would do this, right? And if you wanna do blue, obviously you just do this, okay? And you can combine any, anything here between zero and one, okay? For, for example. So someone is asking, what is the last one? The last one is, I'm gonna comment this and say the last, the last argument is the alpha channel, okay? So this is for transparency. Let's put this 0.5. Oh, actually, I think, let me see. Yeah, so zero, so for example, zero is full transparent. So we should see white, but if you get close to, if you get close to, to one, you're gonna start seeing the color more and more, okay? Why? Uh, maybe it's my display or something, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this one because we want it to be black. I'm gonna keep these guys all black, okay? All right, so this is our first WebGL, WebGL program. It only clears the screen, okay? It turns out that actually it's easier to do this in WebGL than with the 2D context, but everything, every, everything else is gonna be more complicated now. Okay, so 
we need to start to start drawing a triangle on the screen. We need to define a triangle. So we need to we need to define a triangle, right? And that triangle is made out of three three points. Let's call them P one or A B C. Okay. Um, let me comment this like this, three points. So we need to define these points, okay? In WebGL, we normally define, define these points all together or together in one array. And, and normally you would define a triangle like this. You're gonna say triangle equals two. And here you're gonna have the dimension, the, the X and Y coordinates of the triangle. So for example, let's do like zero, zero, zero point five. So this is one, this is one point. Now the second point is here. It's going to be maybe, let's say, 0. Point, let's see, 0 0.05. Let me do actually this. I'm going to do minus 0. 0.5. Minus 0. 0.5. This is the kind of, you can think of this as the bottom left coordinate of the triangle. All right, I'm going to try to comment this. Okay, bottom, bottom left. And then I'm gonna do 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5. And this is gonna be our bot bottom, bottom right. And then I want the top one, which I want it to be zero 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 point five okay this is i'm making up numbers here i'm just picking an arbitrary triangle okay a triangle can be created out of any three points so this is our top top coordinate your top point okay let's let's say you call this a let's call this b and let's call this c okay does this make sense Someone? Okay. Yeah, I need you to say something every now and then because first of all, it might happen that my internet might actually drop here and then I'm talking to myself. So I need I need to, to get some feedback every now and then, okay? Uh, and also to make sure you guys are understanding this. So, okay, so this is our triangle and now we need to get it on the screen. Okay, let's, let's, so this is an a JavaScript array. So I can, I can, I can print this. I can print this. Uh, it's, there's a problem, 24. Okay, I'm missing some, some There you go, it's there. So now we have to, our job. So remember, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that WebGL uses the GPU to render vertices on the screen. So therefore, We need we need to we need to send these points to the GPU. Okay, 
So this is a main difference. This is one of the main differences from the 2D context to the to the WebGL. Now the GPU is a uh, the GPU. I'm gonna complete here saying that because because the GPU is a different is separated or yeah it it's it's a different processing unit in your computer. So it's physically, it's physically a different or separated processing unit. So you have to send the data to the GPU, right? And we have to do that ourselves as programmers. Okay, so high-end libraries, if you use, let's say, Unity, the game engine, or Unreal, or 3.js, if you use this rendering high-end uh, high libraries, they already kind of have all of this done for you. In this class, we're gonna learn the details of all these things under the hood. So how does these libraries work under the hood? Okay, so our first thing that we have to do is we have to specify how this data is gonna be sent to the GPU. And the GPU receives this data throughout, or kind of we as programmers define how this data is going to be specified by creating shaders. So this is where our, our kind of project starts to get a little bit more complicated. So up here, we're going to have to create our shaders. Shaders are programs that run on the GPU. Okay, so we're gonna have to write these programs. They're gonna be very small, but they're gonna have to write these programs and compile them in real time and then send them to the GPU, the programs themselves. And these programs are gonna tell whatever we, or gonna do whatever we told them to do. Uh, <clears throat> and there are two specific shaders that, we, that, that there exist and we're gonna implement the two of them. And as I mentioned, sh shaders, shaders are programs. So here, we're gonna, we're gonna write them, write them as, uh, I'm gonna call this the vertex shader. And this is gonna be, I'm gonna actually do this. This is syntax, so these characters here, they are multi-line strings in JavaScript. So I, with that, I can break lines here and type in stuff, and it's going to treat as one, as one string. So, but this is a string. So this is a program in text format. We're going to type in. And in real time, you're going to compile this program and send it to the GPU. But let's first write it and then, and then do the next steps. I have a question here in the chat, why there is no Z when defining points? There will be, we're gonna define it. Uh, as it is right now, I'm just not passing anything, but, but we're gonna send a Z later, okay? Uh, so we're gonna also have something that is called the fragment shader. It's also a little program. You'll see that the book uses a different notation here, or a syntax, sorry. They actually use open and close quotation marks, which is, I think, very annoying. So I like writing this way, it's way more convenient, okay? So those are two programs that are texts. We're gonna define them right now, okay? <clears throat> so let's see if I can, let me try to do something here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to draw a diagram. Let's see if this works. Uh, so let's see if this works. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I have a triangle. Oh, let's see if this draws something on the screen. Ah. Okay. 
I have I have a I have a triangle here. Well, I have to get used to this thing. It's very laggy. Yeah, it's very laggy, sorry. I have a tri I have a triangle on the screen. And we are defining this in JavaScript. Yeah, sorry, something like lat, lat triangle. Uh, yeah, it's hard to draw because it's it's laggy, but I'm gonna do my best here. Sorry. So we are doing this lat triangle. And this we have we have our, our triangle here. We're gonna we're gonna send this to the GPU. Oh, I'm really sorry, like it's extremely laggy for me, so so it's hard to draw. So we're gonna we're gonna send this to the vertex shader. So this is the vertex shader. Uh, again, I'm really sorry for it. It's very hard. Um, and this is gonna. This is going to be sent to a rasterizer that we don't have to do because this is automatically done by, by WebGL. But then th after this, this goes to a fragment shader. Ah, oh, this is terrible. Fragment shader. <laughs> Sorry. So we specify our triangle here as three points, right? And then this goes to a vertex shader that goes to a rasterizer. This step is automatic for us. It, we don't have to, to, to do anything here. And this goes to the fragment shader. So what the vertex, and this, then there's some next steps here that we're not gonna talk now, but, but this goes for, for future. But our job is to write these things here, vertex and fragment shader. So the vertex shader takes as input the points. So it takes the points and it can be like an arbitrary amount of points, okay? It turns out we only have three at this point. But then the vertex shader takes uh, these points and, and performs operations with it. So it kind of trans you can transform these points. You can do uh, several operations on it, in, in on them, uh, and return. And you can give as output another set of transformed points. Imagine, for instance, that if you want to scale these points, you could take these input points and multiply them by a certain constant, and then you're going to scale these points. But now you're scaling these points in the GPU. Remember that everything that happens here happens in the GPU, so it happens much faster. Okay, so it's different than using our library in JavaScript to, to multiply the triangles. If you do it in the shader, you're doing actually in the GPU. Okay, um, so once you do that, then you get this rasterizer which transforms your points or your transformed points into a fragment, which is, you can think of this now, let's see if I can draw this. At this stage, 
Uh, you, yeah, it's almost impossible. Like it's very laggy. I was trying to draw a triangle, but at this point, we have a triangle here. And we have all the pixels. Here we have all the pixels inside the triangle. So this rasterization does this for us, computes all the pixels that, that are actually inside this triangle. Um, but again, modified. Imagine that here you also get as output, you get another list of points that might be different or not. In this assignment, we won't do much with these points. We won't change them, but uh but later we're going to actually transform these points for example to scale rotate them uh, to do several different transformations of these points but in the fragment shader we we give as output another fragment but now colored so this is going to be kind of painted With some colors. Okay, so the fragment, the fragment shader, and in the fragment shader, we as programmers, we should we should define how to color the pixels in the triangle. Okay, I tried to bring this up. Unfortunately, like the hand drawing is terrible, but hopefully that helped a little bit to kind of give the conceptual idea of what we are gonna do to get the the triangle, uh, the red triangle on the screen. Did so? Does it make sense? Did you guys follow this? Okay, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna close this diagram for now because it takes my whole. It takes the whole screen, so I'm gonna close it. Hopefully, it stays in the video later. It's like this should be. And this is being recorded, so I'm gonna close this thing. Hopefully. Don't close anything extra. Okay, good. So let's get, get back to our code. So now we're gonna have to create that vertex shader. Okay, remember, I'm gonna say here, remember. Oh. Remember, fragment shader, or the vertex shader takes, uh, I'm gonna set a set of points as input, okay? How do we read these points, right? How do we access, how do you access this, this input? Here, so the syntax inside a shader is very similar to C. It's similar, but again, different. So we're gonna learn some stuff slowly and the book covers a lot of different features, but, uh, the first thing that we're gonna type in here is we're gonna specify an attribute, vector two called a position. So an attribute is a variable and it's a variable of the type vector two and I'm calling it a position, okay? It is a here underscore is because this is this a is because this is an attribute. So A, just to highlight it as an attribute. Attributes, they are variables that we use to read uh, this input to the shader. So remember that the shader takes this, this uh, array of points, uh, say, let's say an array, an array of points as input. I want to say here, in this example, think of this array as the variable of what? Variable A position. Why, and then I'm going to ask a question, why, why A position is not an array then? 
a question. Answer, because the GPU, so you see here, this is not kind of an array. It's not something like our pointer in C or something like this with like maybe say 32. It's actually just one, it's as it looks like just one vector, right? But what happens here is because the GPU process every, every vertex in parallel. Okay, so this variable maps to every single vertex in parallel. Okay, so it's not, it's not, you don't, again, we don't have to loop in an array to process the, the, the points. We can think of this variable as every point. And everything that we, everything that we do to this point is gonna be applied to all the, the input points. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is our first line of our shader. And this is a, so I'm defining a variable here. After this, we're going to define the main function. So this syntax is very similar to C, void main. This is a, the main function of the shader. So this is the starting point of the program. Okay. This program we only have uh, one line. And what line is this? So we're gonna, we're gonna return exactly the same point. We're not gonna do anything. Remember in our diagram, we said like, okay, we, we could do anything here. We could scale this point by two, for example. But in this case, we just wanna draw the triangle as it comes. So we, we don't need to change it. We, I just want to return this point. I just like ideally I, we should do something like this. Okay. Like just return the point. Uh, I got a question here. So a position is not actually array, but we can think of it as an one because of parallel. Yes, this is true. Yeah. Think you, it's not an array. You can think of it as an array because everything happens in parallel. Do I need to know what parallel is? Uh, yeah, so parallel means that I can try to draw this again. Uh, so, so the parallel means that the GPU takes an array of numbers and in one single instruction, it performs an operation in one instruction. So for example, in regular CPUs, right? They have instructions of the type Add, and you take one register and a second register and then get the output in the, in the, in the third register. Um, so you can only operate an integer with an integer or a float point, floating point with a floating point. If you wanna, if you wanna sum two, diff, two, two arrays, you have to write a for loop to sum this, this arrays one by one, element by element. In the GPU, you don't need to do that. In the GPU, the, you get an array, a, you get an array B, and the GPU has one instruction that does A plus B. You don't have to write any for loop. It takes like, the, you can think of it as like the registers of, of the GPU, they, they have the size of arrays. Um, so they operate, they're called vector operators or vector, vector processing units because they operate on vectors instead of, instead of uh, just integers or floats. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to get in detail about a parallel, like, parallel architectures and all of that, but, but the GPU does something like that. It operates on vectors as opposed to only floats and integers. Uh, another question is void main necessary? Yes, it is. So similar to a C program, you need a, void, you need a main function to run the program. Otherwise it doesn't compile. So you need this, is, which is like the starting point of the program. So, let me talk about this line. This line doesn't work because this is not the syntax here. We don't have a return statement in shader. Instead, we have to set a specific, a special variable 
that is internal. It's an internal variable that we're going to set, and it's called GL position. So GL position is a variable that is already defined for us. And you can think of this as a return, return a position, OK? But when you set the GL position variable, you are setting a specific location in the memory of the GPU. And that's where the fragment shader is going to load its input from. Remember that, so whatever we set here, remember our diagram. It goes, oh, sorry, whatever, whatever we set here goes to the rasterizer. And then in turn goes to the fragment shader. Okay. So this is how you this is how you return a value. Again, we only in the vertex shader, it only makes sense to return positions. Or in other words, it only makes sense to return a vector. You can't return any other stuff that you want. So be, that's that's why you have to set this. It turns out that a position, I'm going to comment this here, a position is a variable of type vec4. And you're going to see why later, but this is by definition. And the problem is that our vector here is of type 2. So I'm going to get an error if I try to simply do that. Because it doesn't, it doesn't know how to cast from vector 2 to vector 4. But we can, as programmers, and again, this is a new syntax that you're going to learn from Shader, we can cast it by, saying, by, by typing this, vector 4, comma, 0, comma, 1. What this is doing is it's casting our vector two to the type vector four, and it's taking the first two dimensions of this position as the x and y components of vector four, and then we are completing this with zero and one. So this is the z coordinate, and this is the w coordinate of this vector four that we just created here. So we are grabbing the first two coordinates from this guy, pasting it here, and then extending it, extending it here. OK? You could, uh, WebGL, or the, the, the language, I forgot to mention this, but the language that we use to write the shaders is called GLSL, okay, which stands for a GL shading language. In GLSL, we have vector two, vector three, vector four. We have also float. We have integer here. We have a bunch of other stuff that I'm not going to mention right now. But uh, but for for now, I want to keep it vector two, and I want to cast it to vector four. We could also cast to vector three. In this case, it still wouldn't work. And it, if it, to cast a vector three, you would do something like this. It doesn't make sense at this point because we need a vector four, so I'm going to keep it like this. OK? So this is our shader. Our shader doesn't do anything. It literally just sends through whatever. It, so it just returns whatever it got as input. We can think of it as a kind of an identity shader. It doesn't do anything. Does it make sense? Yes? OK. So actually, how many people we have? We have 13 people. OK. All right. So see, there's a lot to discuss when, when we start using WebGL to draw a simple triangle. So we have to write this program. This is done. 
So the second program that you have to write is, is a fragment shader. Remember that we're gonna get the rasterized version of these points in here as input, right? Oh, um, and so how, so in this case, we don't need, we don't need to kind of read the points because we don't have points anymore, right? We don't have input points. Um, we, so we don't have input points here. Here we only have, I'm gonna say here, uh, uh, the fragment shader doesn't take, uh, I'll say like remember, sorry, yes, remember that fragment shader um, takes a fragment kind of like pixels are kind of agreed, can think of agreed pixels. Um, so I wanted to highlight it doesn't, it doesn't have vertices as input. So how do you write a fragment shader? We're gonna, we're gonna create a very simple fragment shader here that is, it starts again, it starts with me, same thing. And it has the same structure where we can't write return. We have to return a caller here. Uh, I'm gonna let me, let me, I'm gonna change this to say something like this, input an array of points. Output also an array, an array of points or I'm gonna change this to have something like this. And then output is an array of points. I'm gonna use the same format here. Input a fragment. Output a caller. So we have to return a caller as, as output. Again, the return syntax doesn't work here. It has a similar, it, it uses the similar idea. You have, we have a variable, special variable called very fry caller. And here, Yeah, I think I think I lost. I think I I lost connection. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm sorry. I hope this is recording fine. I don't know how, what's going to happen. I it says it's recording. Hopefully, I get two separated videos or something. But let me share my screen again. Oh, yeah. Can you still see my screen? Uh, where is the chat? Where is the chat? Uh, just a second. Oh God, where is this? Chat. Okay, so I'm back. Unfortunately, I lost the chat history. So I don't know if there was questions there. So if you, had, if you have a question, type it again. Uh, I was saying here, oh, question, by output you mean by sending to the GPU or canvas? Now, every single stage, remember my diagram. My diagram, every the vertex, the output here sends an array of points to the rasterizer. 
So every output here goes to a different kind of, think of this as a pipeline and where the vertex shader sends the output to the, to the, to the rasterizer, which is a hidden, a hidden process or a hidden uh, part of the pipeline. We don't have to deal with it. And the input here comes from the, comes from the rasterizer. The input here comes from JavaScript. The output here goes, goes back, goes to the browser or to Canvas. This, is, this output here goes to Canvas, HTML Canvas. So there is a pipeline, pipeline going on here. So the output, the inputs and outputs depend on what you're talking about, okay? I hope that makes sense. Uh, and remember our diagram to kind of imagine this in your, in your head. Um, okay, 612, I, I think we're still have, we're good on time, but let me, let me keep going here. So what I wanna do here is return a color. And this can be any color. For now, I wanna return red. I'm gonna type here a comment, return color red. And color is specified using vectors two, and also a vector four. And this is by definition, okay? And B, why? Because we're gonna have color red. I'm gonna type here, colors are defined as vector four, vector four, Um, and this means where, where X is red, Y is blue, Z is red, green, sorry, green, green, Z is blue, and W is alpha, okay? So here is again, red, I'm gonna set green to be zero, blue to be zero and alpha to be one. Okay, I'm hard coding the color. I'm just saying like okay, whatever, whatever comes to me, whatever comes as input here, I'm gonna draw as red. This is what we are doing here. So whatever fragment comes in, it's gonna be red. If the fragment, represents a square, the square is gonna be red. If that fragment represents a triangle, the triangle is gonna be red. If that fragment represents a circle, that circle is gonna be red, okay? So again, it's kind of, the, the fragment shader is kind of agnostic to, to the vertices. It doesn't really know that. We can't, we can't even access that. Uh, we can't even, we don't have access to, to a position here. We can't, we can't type this. This is an error in GLSL. Attributes cannot be defined inside a fragment shader. Attributes can only be defined in the vertex shader, okay? So this, because attributes are used to read sequences of numbers. So, and, and, and this is a special type for the vertex shader, okay? We, I mean, for, every, for more details on these things, you're gonna have to refer to the book. So um, you, it's okay if you're confused about some things here. It's a very different kind of type of programming. It's uh, compared to what you're used to. So it's okay to be confused. So go ahead also and read the book to have more uh, understanding or better understanding of this infrastructure or this structure. Okay, but that's it. That's our fragment shader. And this is our vertex shader. Again, in summary, we, we, take, we take our 
vertices as input and we just pass them through the vertex shader without any, any operation, without doing anything. And whenever the fragment shader gets this triangle, it's going to color that triangle red. That's what this line does. OK. Uh, any questions? Now I'm going to go back to the JavaScript side. Yes, no? Someone, please? Oh, what is the difference between vectorize four and vector two? A vector two is a vector that only has X and Y. So a position here, a position only has X and Y coordinates. We could have another attribute here. I'm going to call this just attribute, I don't know, test. That's a kind of hypothetical attribute. That And then because a test is vector four, it has x, y, z, Z and W. That's the difference. And obviously, vector three has only X, Y, and Z. It doesn't have W. We only have these three types of vectors vectors two, three, and four. And then you can think of them as vectors, like in, in linear algebra. Okay. And, and the number specifies the amount of dimensions. Right now, note that I, I, I used vector two here. Because every point here in our triangle has only x and y. That's why I, I, I wrote vector two there. Okay, because we have x and y here in our triangle. Another question in the chat What is the difference between vector? Oh, no. Oh, so that's why. Yeah, so okay, so yes. That's why, that's why you cast. You're casting to vector four here because we are taking as input vector two. If this was a vector four, yeah, then we, we didn't have to cast. Then we could do a straight this, okay? Because this is vector four and this expects a vector four. But it turns out, I wanna show this to you guys. So, and this again is vector two because we are building this example to read only X and, and Y here. Later, we could extend this to have a Z component here and then have a vector three up there and so on, okay? So there is a last detail here. Uh, um, okay, another, another question is, what is the, the difference between clear color and clear? So it says here in the, in the comments that clear color sets the color uh, whenever you clear the screen. So it just defines the color. It say defines to be black. It doesn't actually perform the operation. The clear function actually goes and paints the background, not the background, it paints the whole frame buffer to be black. And it paints it black because we define this to be black. If you define it to be red, only when you call this that the screen gets red and cleared. Okay, they are separated. Think of this as kind of like set clear color. Yeah, so this, the clear color is more like a setup function. Yeah. Okay, so as I was saying, um, this, we need an extra thing here, which is, it's useful to define the precision of your floats in, uh, in your shader. Uh, inside each element of each element of the vector here, for example, a position, we could do this, for example, a position of x here. Uh, it's a float inside. And so is y, so is z, so is w. Those are all floats inside. So 
to because we are sending information from the CPU to the GPU, again, this is running on the GPU, we need to have standards. So uh, because again, those things come as an array of bits. And then the way, that, so both the GPU and the CPU, they have to, to kind of, um, how do you say? They have to interpret this string of bits in the correct way or in the same way. So you have to define the precision, the precision to be used here. So don't worry too much about these details. What I'm just saying here is that I'm setting the precision of this, the, every float to be medium precision, right? The, and in this class, we won't even change this. So I'm gonna copy this and do this here as well. These things are, are, are useful and helpful. Uh, we might get errors if you don't put this. So I'm adding these lines there just to avoid any, any mistakes, okay? Uh, and but this is essentially just setting the float floating point precision. Uh, okay, so then, now I'm officially done. I'm going to refresh the page and see what happens. Okay, nothing happens. So we spent almost an hour here talking about uh, shaders, but congratulations, you probably wrote your first shader uh, in your life or the first two shaders in your life. Um, they're not running yet. They are just string. They are just text for now. So it's our job to take these strings and transform them or, or to compile them. So we have to compile them in our JavaScript here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna so use the GPU to render vertices in the screen. Okay. Here, I'm gonna say, <clears throat> we, we have to load and compile our, our vertex and fragment, fragment shaders, okay? <clears throat> so fortunately, it's not, I mean, WebGL already provides all the functions that we need to compile the code. Um, and our libraries already have a, an, even, an even kind of more higher level function that we can call to, to do that for us. So we can call init shaders here. And this is a function provided by, by the book. But here, what you have to give as argument is the GL context, which is our object we, we have here, right? This guy. Um, then we have to give the strings of the programs. We have to give these variables here. Vertex shader. Where is it? I'm going to get vertex shader. And fragment shader. So I'm giving the strings as input. And this thing, what is going to do is it's going to compile. So actually, it's the opposite order. It's going to compile the vertex and fragment shaders and, and load them in the GPU. So this is going to do that for us for free. I mean, the whole this function already does that for us. So, and you're going to see that the book tests if this works as well. It's going to say, make sure this this actually uh, ran correctly. And if it, if it didn't run, or if this whole thing here returns null, or uh, or undefined. Then we're gonna have a message similar to this here, saying fail to compile and load shaders. And then return because there was an error or something. Okay. Uh, all right. So at this point now we have our shaders sitting in our GPU. So let me let me re now we should see some. 
if there is any syntax, syntax error in our programs, we should see some errors on our browser. But I'm going to reload the page and see here, it's saying there's a problem. So these kind of errors, like it's saying it found an error on line zero of my, of my shader. So here it found an error here. Uh, why? Because it's medium, it's me, okay, medium, medium P and not, it was, it was just a typo, I think, here as well. Medium P, okay, medium precision. But you see that now it's actually compiling the code. It's trying to compile and it found a syntax error. Great, it, apparently it's working fine. So we just compiled our, our vertex and fragment shaders and now they're in the GPU. Okay, so they are ready to take, they are ready to take inputs. Okay, so they are ready to take our triangle here. So this, this is gonna be mapped to a position, but, but we have to, we still have to tell, to tell the GPU that this is the triangle that we wanna draw and how to, how to read this array here. Because remember, this is an array, it's actually a sequence, a one dimensional sequence of numbers but we have to tell the, the, like, the GPU how to read the sequence. So for example, how, we wanna tell them that this is actually X and Y for vertex A, and this is X and Y for vertex B. And it's not that this is one point and this is one point. There is many different, way, different ways to specify or to, or to separate this into points. So we have to tell the GPU what we want. Okay, so that's our next step here. Next step, we have to we have to specify how to um, how to break. I'm going to use a very like loose like language here or a term. How to how to yeah, how to not break, but specify how to read points from the array, the triangle array. Specific points, specific, specific points for the triangle array or how to read points A, B, and C. A, B, and C from the triangle array. Okay, that's, that's my next step. Uh, so how to do that, right? Now, what we have to do, you have to create, we're gonna have to create a memory space in the GPU for us, or allocate a memory space in the GPU for us. Uh, we note that this, this array here called triangle, it's, it's in our it's CPU. It's in the, the memory of the computer. We have to kind of create a similar location, but in the GPU. And in GPU, in, in WebGL syntax, we call these memory locations buffers, okay? So we have to create a WebGL buffer, buffer. This is similar to a JavaScript array. Which, which is similar to a JavaScript array. Okay. Um, how do you create a buffer? Okay, so let's, let's, there's a very simple syntax for that. We say let, I'm gonna call this, bu this buffer vertex buffer. Again, I'm picking this arbitrary name. Uh, and you have a gl dot create buffer. Oh, sorry, gl dot create buffer. 
So this creates this buffer in the GPU, which is a memory location in the GPU. Um, I have some, some questions in the chat here. Uh, are we trying to send triangle array from A position to A position? I didn't, I didn't understand the, the, the asterisks in your, in your question. Yeah, I didn't understand the question. Are we trying to send triangle array to A position? Yes, that's what we're trying to do. We are trying to send this to this. And this is how we do it. We are sending now doing kind of the interface between the CPU and the GPU. What's going to happen is that a position is going to read from this buffer. Okay, it's a, what's going to happen. So you can think of this as as a GPU GPU memory location. I'm going to put this in parentheses. A GPU an array in GPU memory. Okay. Similar to this, so this is similar to kind of a malloc function or something, but in the GPU. Uh, and again, we can test this if this works. If 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 this would actually, for example, if maybe the if the memory if you don't have enough memory in the in the GPU or something like that, you might get an error. So we want to check that, saying, for example, can't create buffer and return minus one. Okay, get out of the program. If if this is if this works, okay, let's let's refresh the page. Okay. Still nothing. You see, like we have been working for one and a half hours, and we don't see anything. On, you, you see nothing on the screen. Uh, okay, but I promise that once you do this setup, uh, then you don't have to worry too much about it later. You're gonna have to change some stuff, but uh, a lot of things are gonna be similar. So the points are always change because I mean you might want to draw like a sphere or or a square but the setup is gonna be very similar. So, okay, now I need to tell my, I need to tell the GPU to, to bind, to bind this buffer to position, okay? So I have to tell it how, to bind, I'm gonna say like, I'm gonna say something uh, we have to tell, uh, we have to bind, bind this new buffer to the A position, position attribute in the shader, in the vertex shader. Okay. And how do we do that? There is a command called gl.bind buffer. Okay. Oh God, bind buffer. We, you, you probably already saw this in the slides. I'm very quickly in the slides uh, from James, but this is how you actually do it. So this is gonna do bind the buffer. You can bind the buffer to many different things in the GPU. And one of them is binded to what is called an array buffer. So you can bind this, for example, to be specific indices. So the meaning of this flag here, array, array buffer, uh, you can have different, different flags, first of all. And the meaning of these flags depend, depends uh, a little bit. And I don't want to spend time talking about all of them right, right now. But for now, what we have to know is that this array buffer is an array. Remember, 
that we use this analogy here, right? You can think of that array as this array here. Okay, that we're gonna that the vertex shader is gonna read. So the array buffer is gonna be the input to to our vertex shader, uh, and and also this array can be mapped to an attribute. So this flag is useful because it specifies an array that can be mapped to an attribute in the shader. Okay. So our last step is then to map map this array buffer called vertex buffer to our attribute a position in the vertex shader. Okay. And to do that, to do that, to do that, we need, we first need to access the location or the memory, the memory location of the attribute a position. Uh, remember that a position is a variable in uh, in the GPU memory. So we need to grab it. We need to grab that location. To grab that location. How do we do that? We can do we're gonna re we're gonna grab this position. I'm gonna say lat a position. I'm keeping the same name here because to make, but th this is a this is a CPU version of the GPU a position. So so this is kind of like the the CPU version of of that. Um, so. How to grab that variable? You have gl dot get attribute location. So this is a very intuitive name. You're gonna get an attribute location from the shader. And what, which attribute do I want? Do I want to grab? I want to grab a position. So here, I'm gonna give the string a position as argument because this is the name of the variable in the shader. Right, again, I, I, I tend to use the same name here just as a convention because it's easier, but nothing stops you to call this blah, blah, blah. You know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can call this whatever you want. It turns out it's way more convenient to kind of match the names when, uh, and to think as this, as the CPU version of, 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 the, of this variable. Um, so if you don't ask questions, I'm gonna keep going, okay? Because we have 20 minutes. So let me know, interrupt me if you, if you have questions. So, so now with that location, now with, with the A position, with the location, with the location of, of A position, we now have to specify how to split, how to split the triangle array into points, into different points or vertices, right? Again, as I mentioned, we could break it like this, we could break it three by three, you know, they could break in many different ways. So it's it's our job as a programmer to to specify that, you know, and there is a, a, a special function for that, which is GL vertex attribute 
uh, vertex uh, attrib attrib pointer. Um, and it takes six arguments here. It's a, I, so based on previous quarters, this function is the main source of confusion for students. So make sure you understand this very well. Okay, especially because we're gonna have to play with this a lot in this course. We're gonna have to change this and do, we have to do different, more like fancy things here. As it is right now, it's very simple, but make sure you understand these parameters very well. First of all, what is the index here? The index is actually a, a position. So this name is not very good, but so the first argument is the memory location. Is the memory location that you wanna that you wanna set? The set it's a position in this case because you wanna change you wanna specify how this variable is gonna be mapped to these numbers. Okay, so what I want right now is to break this two by two. Okay, so second argument here is size. What is size? Size is the size of the A position. So it's, it's two here because of this two. Because, because we define this to be vector two, what I want here is to, is to be two, okay? If that was a vector three, you would have three here. If that was a vector four, you would have four here. But essentially, this can be mainly two, three, or four. So it's two here because we are talking about a vector two. Um, type. The type here is the type of each element. In this case, each element is of the type GL float. Okay, it's a specific flag from WebGL saying it's a float number. We have a flag here, or a, a, this fourth argument is a Boolean, which is either false or true. And it, if we want to normalize, if you want to normalize these things, these points, WebGL can, can do that automatically for us. But we don't want to change that. We're going to just set to false. We don't want to normalize anything. Just, just send it as it is, OK? <clears throat> and now we have these two last arguments that are, is going to define how to split, how to split these numbers. The stride here is the, the size or where where to start reading. So for example, uh, here, I wanna just set zero and zero because I'm telling, I'm telling the GPU to read a pair of numbers starting from zero so here, for example, I start at zero, I read two, okay? And then I start here again. This number tells us how much to jump whenever reading vertices. So for example, if this here was one, I would start reading from here. And then I would read two points. And then I would jump a point and do this. Uh, this doesn't make sense. At this, uh, so this doesn't make sense. Uh, this example that I just mentioned is kind of meaningless. But, but these two, two arguments here control uh, how to split the numbers, OK? Later, we're gonna see. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to this and add the third dimension, so then we can see how this would change. Okay, 
more specifically, this is going to start to get interesting. So as it is right now, we just set this to zero, zero. And I want you to actually go and study these arguments very well in the book. Specifically, when you start having, imagine, oh, sorry, when you start having extra data for vertices. So imagine in the future, we're going to do something like this. We're going to give a color value per vertex. So we would have something like here. Let's say uh, one, zero, 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 one, zero, and maybe zero, zero, one. So if we did that, imagine that, imagine that we, we wanted to send to treat these two points as x and y, but these three numbers as the red, green, and blue components of this number. OK? So this is a kind of a fancy example of how you would need or why you would need to change these numbers here. Uh, because you could specify more than x and y here. You could specify color here, example. So the data that you specify, it's uh, very flexible. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this later in the future. So I just wanna give this as a motivation for why we have these examples, as these two numbers, sorry. So as it is right now, I'm not gonna keep this, but, but later we're gonna have to do that, okay? So hopefully, I mean, this is going to be a little bit confusing. It's normal, but, but you, with exercising, we're going to for sure understand all of this. It's very important to exercise these things. So, okay, this is it. I, I'm, I'm justifying that I want to read these guys two by two as positions. Why S position? Because I'm mapping this to A position. That's why, that's why this, these guys are going to be position. Um, and remember, A position is not a special name. It turns out this is a position because I'm actually giving it as a position here. Okay? So because I'm giving this to GL position, I know that as a programmer that A position maps to position. Uh, and so on. So because of that, this a position variable is going to represent positions. Um, okay. And now our last thing is to enable. We have to enable this. We have to call enable. Enable. It's a very long thing. Enable vertex attribute array and pass a position. So see what this is doing is enabling, is enabling this guy. So this function here, this function here kind of sets or seals the deal. It kind of say seals the deal. It's, it, it goes and say, okay, see all this thing, see all these definitions here that I just did, make sure it happens, right? So it's going to enable this, this vertex attribute buffer. It's going to enable this buffer, or it's going to literally go and bind this buffer with a position the way we specified, okay? So this is what actually turns it, the whole thing on. So, with that, okay, okay, we got we are we got a problem saying that actually get attribute location is not a function. Uh, let me see. I typed something probably wrong. It's probably oh yeah, it's attribute attrib. Yeah, get attribute location. 
uh, fail to execute that on what is the problem uh, oh yeah I have to give sorry I have to give my, my bad I have to give a first argument here which is program this program gl.program is the actual compiled shaders okay so yeah you, you can have access we won't deal with this much in this course we won't do much with this but turns out you have to give the program which is the compiled version of the shaders um so you're reading this from this program which is actually this two, you can think of this as these two things combined okay so so you can you can read attribute locations from from gl program okay now this should work there you go yeah so it's working still nothing on the screen okay but now everything is kind of ready to go like it's we have everything defined um so my last thing is to send to send this i have to send the data i have to send this data to the buffer so see that this line here it creates a buffer it binds the buffer it gets the position and it sets how to read but we haven't mapped triangle to a position so we we up to here uh here oh, here we have uh we so up to here we have uh, we have set up our buffer in the gpu our vertex buffer in the gpu we need to send our triangle or i'm going to say our vertices in this case a triangle to this buffer I have a question here in the chat. What does it mean to bind buffer? So bind buffer again. It's I, I recommend you ref, like referring to the book to understand exactly what this does. But you can bind a buffer to different different types of arrays in the GPU, and one type is called array buffer. So so another type is is um, an indices buffer that you're going to see in the future so it just turns out we can bind this to different things and as it is right now we want to bind bind to an array buffer because with the array buffer we can we can send data to it oh a person is asking i mean the meaning of the word binding binding you can think of it as as like putting things together or like mapping i think mapping uh or associating, I think associating is 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 a good way of seeing things. Um, okay. Um, okay. Finally, we're gonna send the data. We're gonna send the data to to the. We're gonna map actually send the the vertices to to the buffer, which we do with gl dot buffer buffer data and here you're going to have to give which type of, of buffer again see that this is the same type that we put here in line 83 so what what webgl is going to do is set that that buffer there um here we're gonna have to give which what data we want to send we want to send a triangle and here we are sending the triangle to the buffer and 
And this last argument is gl dot static draw. Uh, is this is you're telling how the data is going to set there or sit there. You're saying that this is going to be a static. I think that buffer won't change. Um, or the settings of the, that buffer won't change. Uh, there is other ways you could do that. For this course, I think everything's going to be static draw. So don't worry much about this. <clears throat> but that's it. Once you do that, again, let's see. Okay, now I, our buffer should be there. Our, our triangle should be there mapped to that buffer. So finally, finally, we can call a draw function. <laughs> so see how verbose this gets just because we have to draw using the GPU, right? It's very important. You might ask yourself, why is it so complicated, right? Because we are dealing with two different processing units that are independent. And the GPU is, has a very different architecture compared to the CPU, right? And we want to have very flexible ways of drawing things. So we have a programming language to specify how things are going to look, which is our shading language. So that's why it's kind of verbose. But once you set this up, the capabilities are enormous. Right, we can get a lot of cool stuff. We can do a lot of cool stuff with WebGL. So now we can finally call gl.draw arrays. And we're gonna, there's different, there, there's different draw modes. We can call gl.draw arrays. You're gonna see that there's something called draw, draw elements. Um, we, the book covers both of them, but we suggest you keeping always this draw arrays because this is gonna draw an array of numbers. And, and the first argument is how to connect or how, how to connect this, if to connect and how to connect these numbers. Uh, and I'm gonna say to connect them as triangles gl the triangles there is stuff there's there's different ways there's modes like triangle fan there's other there's lines there's gl dot points there's different modes for example G, gl dot points draw I, we can we can try these things but i'm gonna i'm gonna do triangle here first Tr the gl dot triangles triangles okay and then the first argument um is is zero and i want to talk about it later but the second the second argument is the amount of vertices you want in this case is three so we are draw, drawing three three elements or three vertices right here one two three Okay, you could, instead of writing three there, you could say triangle dot length divided by two, right? This is six divided by two, which is three. So if we increase the amount of, if you, if you change this triangle, this thing still works. All right, it's 7 p.m. and Hopefully you're gonna see a red triangle on the screen. No. What is the problem? Oh, I see. Oh, I forgot one thing. You have to specify this triangle using a typed array. What's a typed array? You can just create a new array like this. You can cast, honestly, can cast, you have to, not can, you have to map, you have to send this triangle as a typed array. Uh, because JavaScript is like dynamically typed, you have to make sure this is a float 32 because that's the format that the, 
the the GPU is expecting and so on. So you have to do this. Okay. Let me try again. Oh, there you go. Finally, 7 and 1 p.m. After two hours, we got a red triangle on the screen. After doing all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are saying the chat. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's long, but it's now very flexible. Once you get this done, we can easily tweak stuff. Oh, I'm gonna extend this for like extra nine minutes if you don't mind. Do you have any questions for now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I lost you at uh, bind buffer. So you want to create a buffer in the GPU, correct? Yes. And then you want to send the vertices to that buffer. Yeah, you you want to send yeah you want to send the triangle vertices to the buffer. Yes. Okay, and then you're getting a position again. Why are you doing that in the next line? Here. Yeah. So I'm getting this. I'm doing this because again, remember everything that we write in the JavaScript here, it's running on the CPU. So I have to grab the variable from the GPU and have a copy in the CPU, kind of. Uh huh. Okay, so now I have kind of a mirrored variable here. Okay, and then you're going to play with a position to. And then now I can, yeah, now I can map it. Now I can do whatever I want with a position. And okay. So now I can do, I can set because I, I grabbed it. Yeah, and, and this is important because in the future we will see. We're going to have different attributes here. For instance, we're going to have something called a color. Uh, and it can be a vector three, for example, or four. Let's say RGB vector, or let's say call four. We could have a color here. Uh, and in this case, if I want to change that specific variable, I would have to grab it. I would have to pass a color here. Okay, so the buffer that you created there, it's the same thing as the A position then? Not at this point. This is just a kind of, as I, at, at this point, it's just a lose, it's a lose memory location. What are we doing with the buffer then? Are we doing anything with it? Yeah, so the buffer is, is created, is created uh, on the GPU. We get the location at this point here. At this point here, line 96, I'm actually connecting these two things together. Oh, okay, I see. So when I call this thing here, I'm saying a position variable is going to kind of use this memory location. Okay. So think, keep in mind Thank that you. WebGL is a kind of a stake machine. So you, you create this and then everything that you do after this is going to consider this buffer because because this is the last active state so uh, so this is so webgl can be seen as a state machine it doesn't have like it's not object oriented so you don't have like properties of things and buffers don't have like their own properties it, it's a very Procedural, it's a procedural language that you write very similar to C, uh, even though we are inside JavaScript. So again, there's a lot to talk about. And it's, it, we already covered a lot here. Uh, what I want to do is I want to show some, some things that you can play with uh, to understand what's going on here. So for example, I could, what happened if I add a four, like if a net, an, another vertex here? And well, this is kind of weird, right? Because you have a triangle here. Okay, it makes sense to have a triangle out of three points. But what is a triangle with four points? How does it does it work? What happens if I do that? Right. So let me let me create a let me create a point here. I don't know, like here, zero minus 0 0.5. And I'm gonna refresh the page. Well, nothing happens. Okay. So let me try to change it to minus 0.5, minus 0.5, actually. Nothing really happens, right? Let me try to create a second vector, second triangle here 
imagine now I'm concatenating two triangles. Uh, so I'm going to create a second vec a second triangle here. Let's say from minus one zero to zero, maybe, and uh, and then let's do one zero um, one zero zero. I want to visualize this. So it's minus one. It's there. So minus one is the bottom left here. Minus one. Uh, minus one. Minus one. Okay. I'm going to do minus one. Minus one. Uh, I'm going to do one. Minus one. And I want to do one. One. Maybe one. Yeah, let's try to see what let's see what happens. See what happened here? I have a triangle now. I have two triangles. I mean, unfortunately, they are overlapping, so and they have the same color. So, but there is a triangle here, and there is another triangle here. Okay. Uh, so you can stack as many triangles as you want in this in this. Um, vertices. You can, for example, you could call this vertices instead of triangle, and then have multiple triangles in here. Um, so I'm gonna. This is one example that you, you could do, and we're gonna do something like that in the in the future. You could have a z coordinate here. I'm gonna set it to zero. And if I do this, if I just put an, a Z coordinate there, uh, what's going to happen is my the GPU is going to try to read this as X Y Z, X sorry as X Y, and then this is another point, this is another point, this is another point, and probably this is going to break. And why why is that? Because remember we we are saying here too. So we are saying two here, and, and so it's trying to it's trying to kind of go two by two here. Even though I added the third element, it doesn't doesn't know. I, I want to read this as an, as a, as a z. So if I if I refresh this, I get this. I still get something, uh, which is probably this this guys. Uh, but if I want to read these as z coordinates i should change this to three and then go up here change this to three as well because they have to be the same and here now remember we are casting to a vector four but now it's a vector three so we, we can just give one here okay so because this now we get x y and z from a position and just extend the last the last dimension Oh, what was the problem? Uh, valid operation. Uh, what is? This? Oh, yeah, because now it's not divided by two; it's divided by three. Okay, so it's it's now we have three components per per vert vertex. There you go. So now we have exactly the same output because, because now these are just zero coordinates for Z, right? So it makes sense that we are seeing the same thing we saw with two coordinates. So I just want to show some bear, like some how you could play with these variables to get 3D vertices. So now these guys are specified in 3D, and I want to keep it this way. Okay, uh, there's a question here in the chat. Can you repeat the new flow 32 array part? Um, yes, I can. This part, right? What I had before when I was building the, the example was this. I had this and this throws an error. If, if we try to do this, it, it, 
it says GL draw arrays attempt to access out of range vertices in attribute zero. Uh, it, ter it turns out we have to cast this triangle or you have to send this array as a float 32 array. What does it, this mean? This, this, this float 32 array is a JavaScript built-in function. So this is, I can type here, for example, I can come here and say lat a equals new, let's say I'm gonna make a name, uh, test a equals new float, float 32 array, okay? And, and if I give here nothing, I'm gonna say just test a. So if I, if I print test a here, so this is an object of, that stores, it stores um, floats with this precision. So, and this, turns, this is different than just saying let test B equals this. So this test A is also an array and test B is also an array, but, but test A is a more like strongly typed array. And more than that, it has a specific precision to every single float. So it just turns out that you have to give that as argument here instead of a regular array. You could instead do this here on top as well. You could this whole thing here. That's fine too. You could do this here and then, and then just have triangle here. What matters is that the, the array you're sending is a float 32 array, okay? This is another version of the same thing it works. Uh, okay, some of you other changes we could do to play in this program. You could change the color of a, of a triangle by let's say here, you could just hard code another color. Green, Blue, okay. So these are just like, again, these are colors that, that pass through that we, we, we give to our fragments. Okay, a fragments are all the pixels inside the triangle. In this case, they're all blue. Uh, and one last thing is that I wanna introduce you to another concept, but before that, do you have any other questions regarding how to draw a triangle on the screen? Uh, okay, okay. So the last concept I wanna talk about is the concept of uniform variables in the shader. Um, and I'm gonna motivate this by saying that, imagine that if you, if you wanna give a color as input here from the JavaScript. As it is right now, I can't, as a programmer, I can, I can only send like change hard coded values here. But in your assignment, you're gonna have to need like, you're gonna need sliders here and the color is gonna come from the slider. So how do you change these numbers in real time, right? So that's the motivation uh, of uniforms. And what are uniforms? Uniforms are another type of variable that you can, that you can create uh in in the um, in the shader and these uniforms can be can can live both in the fragment and in the vertex shader they work in both shaders so yeah so you can think of uniforms as global variables in in the shader space okay so here i could define for example you a color and, and I could simply give it here, right? So, so I want to send you, I want to change you color in real time in JavaScript, okay? So if I, if I run this as it is, I get white because 
it probably means that this variable is set, has a default value of probably all ones. Let's see. If if I did if I had this before, I probably would get the same effect. Yes. So it seems what you can probably guess from, from, from this output is that this U color here has white a value or one, one, all ones as default. Okay. So it's kind of working, but, but now we have to change this, right? So we saw before how to set attributes. So attributes are very complicated kind of because you have to do this whole thing here to, to, to get to this point and then this line actually goes and sends the data to that variable. But for uniforms, thankfully, it's much easier. So for uniforms, we can simply imagine, we can simply type this. We can say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna here change the color, the uniform color or, or U color you color in the fragment shader, in the shader. And it's GL dot, you have to get the uniform location, okay? So you get, similarly, remember we have get attribute location for attributes? For uniforms, you're gonna get something similar, which is GL dot get uniform location, get uniform location. And we're gonna have a GL program, same thing. Oh God, program. And the name here is the name of the variable you want. In this case is you call. Okay. So this is the variable. All right. So I'm gonna say let you caller. And then now if I print this, I get something here which is a probably a location in in the GPU. Yeah, it returned me something, right? Uh, so now I just have to simply, I just have to simply, I can directly set this. Because again, a uniform is not an array. So, Remember the attributes, attributes, you can think of attributes as arrays, but uniforms, no, uniforms, they are not, you cannot think them as arrays because they are actually just one vector for. They are not an array of vectors, it's just one vector. So because of that, it's much easier, and you can think of this vector as a global vector you can access in any part of your shaders both vertex and fragment. So for example, I could have this here. It's kind of meaningless, but I could. I could, I could do this, for example. And then you'll see how at some points, like uniforms are gonna coexist in, in the shaders. But at this point, I just wanted it here, okay? Um, so, so yeah, so to change that, I got the location. So I can simply type gl dot uniform, and here you'll see for every type of uniform. For example, this is a vector three. No, this is a vector four uniform, right? So because of that, I have to call here gl dot uniform. Oh wait, four f. And this four here is because this is a vector four. If this was a vector three, then this would be three F. I'm, I'm gonna keep it this way. So we, uh, and so you have one per type. We have one function per different type of uniform, unfortunately. So here I give first argument is the, the uniform I wanna change, which is U color, right? This guy here. A change and now because this is a three f this means this means three floats 
So I can give three floats as arguments here. I can give, and, I, and these for me are gonna be colors. So I can say red. So this is gonna be three floats. One zero, I'm picking arbitrary numbers. One, zero, zero, okay? So if I do that, this already changes the color for me. And obviously I have to do this before calling the draw because I want to change that before drawing, okay? So if I run this now, oh, there is a, cannot convert. Oh, okay, I changed this to be vector three and now I have to cast this with an alpha channel. So I'm grabbing the three first coordinates from U color and casting it to vector four because this expects a vector four. I just adding an alpha of one, okay? There you go. So now our triangle is, is actually, our color is coming from the JavaScript. See, like we can now change this on the JavaScript side, right? We can, we can, you can change this anything. You can put anything here. You can put like say combine red and green and have any mix of these colors, right? So, so I got a question here in the chat asking if before we were doing this through HTML. No, no, before we are hard coding it here in the shader, before we had the color here. So the shader was specifying the, the color. Now we have it still in the shader, but now the color is coming through the JavaScript using these two lines here. And this is useful, why? Because now we can specify three sliders, right? And I'm gonna let you do that. I'm gonna, you're gonna, or I, you can say, you can have a variable color that is an array. And here you could have color zero, color one and color two, right? So I'm hard coding this, but you could, you could, you can use slider, HTML sliders to set the components, to set the colors, this variable. And by doing this now, you could, you could have an HTML slider that controls this variable here, either as an array, or you could have independent components like R, like this, G, uh, you could have independent like this. I like having color at, like this. And you could have this call uh, like this. And I like keeping it as an array. So now it still, it still works, okay? For example, if I change this, the color changed there. Um, okay, that's what I had for today. With this, you should be able to complete the whole assignment. This is the most fundamental example or the most basic example one can write in, 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 Java, in WebGL. And this turns out to be extremely important because everything with most in graphics, they, are, they just boil down to a bunch of triangles. Right? So for example, every complex geometry can be seen as a whole a set of triangles. And this can be like sometimes uh, millions of triangles but it boils down to drawing triangles on the screen. So if you know how to draw one triangle, then extending this to like millions of triangles um, is not a super hard task, but make sure you understand this whole example line by line, because this is very, very important. We saw many students getting super confused last, like the previous quarters, because they, they copy these things or they go over these things too fast and then later these things are gonna get complicated. You're gonna have more complicated buffers. We're gonna have more data per vertex. We're gonna have a whole like new scenario that's gonna ask you to change these things and um, write more complex WebGL stuff. But for now, that's what I have. I can take any final questions if you have, otherwise I'm gonna post this code 
uh, I'm going to upload it to Canvas and post it on Piazza. And then you guys can, can study this. And, and the video is going to be available on YouTube too. It's going to take me some time, but by for sure, by like early tomorrow morning, you should all get this. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, bye.